we will start by describing what we call the periodogram estimate. And to do that, we will, um, we will uh, base our derivation on Parseval's theorem. Now, if you have studied Fourier analysis before in, in either a signals and systems course or in a communications course or any other course, essentially, uh, you might be familiar with Parseval's theorem, but if you are not, again, it's fine. I'm not going to go into the details of this. I'm not going to prove it. I'm not going to expect you to know it. The essential observation is the power of a signal remains the same under Fourier transform, okay? So let's say you have a signal, either random or deterministic, really, it doesn't matter. Um, in the time domain, the power it carries is um, proportional to its square. And in the frequency domain, if you take its Fourier transform, the power it carries is again proportional to the magnitude square of the Fourier transform. Okay, as I said, the power of a signal uh, remains the same under Fourier transform. If you have a signal and the, the power it carries, uh, can be uh, derived in time uh, domain by obtaining the square of the signal. And in the frequency domain, if you take the Fourier transform, this, uh, the magnitude square of the Fourier transform is going to give you the exact same quantity, okay? So the power, the amount of power um, a signal carries, uh, okay, is going to be the same either computed in time domain or computed in frequency domain. So that's going to be the basis of our analysis because we are going to carry our analysis into the frequency domain where a lot of computation becomes easier. Okay, so to start with, suppose that again, you have an observation of your random process X of T in the interval up, uh, from zero up to T, okay? Um, well, in, in different texts, this might be different. Well, uh, my, uh, my notes here are based on Leon Garcia. Okay, so it is defined from zero up to T, but uh, in other texts, in other resources, you might see this as from minus T up to T or zero to two T, two T et cetera. Doesn't really change the result, but let's see the derivation here. The Fourier transform of this sample, okay, it's, it's not going to be the Fourier transform of a function because you just have a limited observation, uh, but it's going to be the Fourier transform of a sample from zero to T. So my integration limits are going to be from zero up to T, but the transformation is the same, X of T multiplied by this complex exponential e to the power of minus J two pi F T integrated with respect to T from zero to T. In, in the ideal case, if you have X of T as a, as a function of time in general, this integral would be from minus infinity to infinity. But here, since our observation window is limited, the integration limits are also limited, okay? So this we call the, um, the Fourier transform of the observation of the sample. Now, the power density at frequency F is approximated by what we call the periodogram estimate. Okay, as I said, this is proportional to the magnitude square of the function or the magnitude square of its Fourier transform. Okay, and since we are talking about power density, we are normalizing it with uh, the, the interval of observation, the, the, the length of the interval. Okay, so take the magnitude square of the Fourier transform, uh, divide by the, the length of the interval, what you get is we call what we call the periodogram estimate. Now, um, X of F, the Fourier transform of the observation is by definition a complex valued function of F, okay? So the magnitude square of any complex uh, function, is, as you know, should be the function multiplied by its complex conjugate. Okay, if you are not familiar with the term complex conjugate, what I mean is if you have a number A plus J times B, where J is the imaginary unit, uh, the complex conjugate of this would be A minus JB, okay? Wherever you see J, 
just make it minus j. That is the complex conjugate. Okay, and if you multiply um, a, a complex function with its complex conjugate, you get its magnitude square. Okay, that is because well, if if you just apply it to this, uh, a plus j v times a minus j v would give you a square plus b square. That is the magnitude square. It's sort of the the uh, amplitude or, or the norm, let's say, of this complex vector in two dimensional space. This is A, this is B, and the norm here is, uh, the square of the norm is A square B square. But, and its square is A square plus B square, okay. So here again, I'm going to plug in this definition for both X of F and its complex conjugate. As you see, here I have the conjugate and I have this expectation here I have e to the power minus j something, and in, in the conjugate I have e to the power j times something. That is the conjugate part. Okay, so this is called the periodogram estimate. Now, using this, we define the power spectral density. Power spectral density. It's still a density because it describes the uh, density of the power distribution with respect to the frequencies. Okay. The power spectral density, in short, PSD of a random process X of T is defined as the limit of the periodogram estimate as the observation period approaches infinity. Okay, as limit goes, as limit of T goes to infinity, one over T times the expected value of uh, the magnitude square of uh, the Fourier transform of your observation. That is the definition of power spectral density, and this is our notation. S sub, the uh, name of the random process, and it's a function of frequency. 